Hi everyone, um, I'm going to be joined by Brian Martin Brooks uh, and we're going to be talking about his life and his work. And now after seven hours of makeup, uh, I'm now joined by Brian Brooks. Hello. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. How, Here how... we are in lockdown. Yes, we are in lockdown. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In our bubble. Yeah. Um, so I would love to know more about how, you know, you started, why, why you got into art, basically, in the first place. Like, what, what made you an artist, I guess? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I was, we did talk about some of these things before uh, briefly and uh, going back to 1955 when I went to primary school um, I, I had already been doing some drawing like all, all, all kids do you know uh, pencil drawing uh, crayons things like that on the floor I used to always do stuff on the floor and um, when I went to the, my first day at school what struck me was that all of the children were all doing the same drawings. So each drawing was a house with a roof and a chimney with smoke coming out, four windows in the house and a door with a tree on one side and flowers on the other side. Uh, and in those days, I remember there's always a, a path that went up to the, the front door, which was always a, two parallel lines. And two things I noticed was, one was that there's no, no perspective in the path. And the other thing was that I thought the sky should be a gradation from blue down to paler blue. And maybe I said something or maybe I didn't, but I certainly thought it at the time. That's a memory that stands out quite... You were five? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going for a five-year-old to like <laughs> understand perspective yeah, and like yeah. gradation in the sky. Yeah, yeah. And so from that point, I didn't know the words, I, but I just knew the observation. I knew what yeah. something should look right. like. Okay. Yeah. And then from that point on, you started drawing, and and that you know you, you just continued from there. Like what was so? What was your representation of a, of a house, for example? How did you? What were, what were your first few drawings? Do you remember? Well, I think I think the. What I tended to do was not draw anything from memory or imagination, but I would draw from things that were around me. So if I was going to draw uh, an uncle or an aunt or something, I'd want them to be there to be able to draw them. Whereas other people would remember what they looked like and do a sort of a rendition of them. Uh, so I think it was always based on observation. And I, I think there was a certain amount of escapism as well, because people would visit and aunts and uncles and cousins and so on would visit and I wouldn't really understand the grown-up conversation so it was great to be able to just you know Brian's okay because he's on the floor and he's drawing sort of thing you know uh, so it was always a, a form of escape I suppose. Right and then that carried on obviously um, later on you um, what was your you know um, what happened after when you went to school you went to grammar school um, and then you carried on went to um, art school um, in New York, so you moved yeah. to New York from, from the UK, and yeah. then what was the uh, what was your life from then on? Well, I mean, in the primary school, we started off with a headmistress called Miss Edmonds, who was very strict, um, but she didn't stay very long. I remember she invited an opera singer to entertain the troops, and I remember seeing her standing there with tears streaming down her face, either because she thought the opera was amazing or because she knew she had to leave, but I was never really, or perhaps it was tears of joy that she had to leave. <laughs> and then we got a new headmaster, uh, Mr. Ward, who was very much into music. So I remember we all learned the recorder, um, I learned the violin, uh, and uh, he would come into a classroom uh, out of the blue with uh, percussion instruments, and he'd say, right, you play the triangle, you play the tambourine, and he would get the kids to play these different rhythms and, and make, make up music. So he was great, but I don't remember much about anything visual in primary school. When I went to grammar school, we had Douglas Cox. And uh, I think in my penultimate, well, he was a very, very interesting artist. I really liked what he did. And he would do um, enormous posters every year for the Christmas shows and he would do all, all of the uh, scenery for plays like Midsummer Night's Dream and stuff. He was, he was fantastic. 
and he got me into um, Patrick Silkscreen. And then, yeah, I went to uh, art school in New York, and uh, that's when uh, it turned out that knowing about photo silk screen was useful because I got invited to work with uh, Andy Warhol and sort in the factory. And what did you do within, within the factory with Andy Warhol? I mean, pretty big um, thing for, for, to happen in those days, right? This is yeah. the 60s, which, which, which era, like late 60s? Like, yeah, that was from 69 to 74 ish, somewhere around there. Because it, it just so happened that as a chap on the. I was in um, student accommodation on Willoughby Avenue uh, in Brooklyn. And uh, on my floor uh, was a chap called Rupert Smith, who was from Florida. And he would, ha he would have parties and, you know, great music and so on. And so we just started talking one night and got, for some reason, got onto the subject of photo silk screen. And so he invited me down to a party and that's how I met the gang and so it went from there, yeah. Wow, and, 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 and do you remember what your first kind of like foray into the factory were, like was? Like what were you, you know, what were you doing? What were you, you collaborating with anyone within that, within that group um, on any artworks, any projects? Well, the funny thing was uh, that um, I, talk, I mentioned before about doing drawings on the floor um, that's the way we used to work it used to be these great big sheets of paper or stretch canvas uh, and uh, we, would, we would make up the, the screens and then put them on and then squeeze them so it was all rather than having big tables like Bridget Riley has for example it was, it was all done on the floor so that, that was kind of an echo of my sort of childhood I suppose uh, but I remember some of the projects like your Chairman Mao and stuff like that, yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. you, you helped? Yeah. You helped on these projects? Yeah, That's yeah. That's incredible. Wow. And uh, at one point, I s he was always very open to suggestion, actually. Andy. 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 <laughs> and uh, one suggestion was, uh, why don't we do a little bit of painting on the, especially on the canvas. So rather than the whole thing being a machine process, we put a little bit of humanity into there as well.